want to talk about building synergies between Cyrillic scripts and uh, GTLDs. Now, the first question would be why? Well, you know, what's you know, where's the problem? Why, why would you why would you want to be concerned about um, synergies between uh, Cyrillic scripts, TLDs, and, and why Cyrillic script TLDs? Now, from core, we have some kind of interest. Why? Because you know we, we put our mouth where the uh, where our words are. But um, at, the, at the same time, uh, there is an overwhelming problem. I've tried to build, you know, to design a, a metaphor to just make people understand what the problem is. You know, we have IDN domains. There's a big need for them, but then how do we get them? How do we get them out? So I, to make it to make people understand what the problem is, I, I'm showing this. Ramp here with a board sitting on the ramp, and we've got this thing here the user's habits and belief that we're trying to change. Because only if users' habits and beliefs evolve so that they will actually believe that IDNs work, and specifically that Cyrillic TLDs work, will they actually be used? If they, if they believe they don't work, you know, we can do whatever you want, it's not going to happen. Now, here we are with the IDN TLDs. And the only people we can talk to, essentially, you know, directly, are the registrars, who in turn talk to domain holders, who in turn have some kind of uh, indirect relationship with, with ISPs, um, or direct relationship, it depends on the, on the case. And that is how we try to push. And as you can easily imagine, if we just try to push here, the only thing that's going to happen, these things in the middle are going to spring out. If you just apply Brute force, you know, you can go and mark, uh, do marketing the TV or, or whatever. It's not going to, it's not going to work. The number of users out there, you know, look at, we're talking about 117 GTLDs. They about to talk about 200 million existing domains, um, and uh, we have whatever, two billion users um, um, of the internet, maybe three. I have, uh, I have no idea. Of, the, of, the, of those, most, most of them would need ideas, actually, if, um, if you look at the world population. If you look at the new GTLD program, you should sim simplify things. Uh, and they're not as detailed as, as Dirk was. I expect about 700 exclusive use TLDs if, uh, if, uh, if things go well, and 700 public suffixes. If things really go well, probably less. And of these, we have just 117 IDN TLDs. Not all of them are going to be public subjects. But um, uh, specifically for the Cyrillic TLDs, I'm going to come to this later, it's different. And I'm just trying to look at things the way we from core see it, because we are kind of forced to, to, to look at core's perspective from our own interest. Core has a number of activities, and in the context of the new of the, the GTLDs, we've got 13 ASCII TLDs to take care of, one way um, uh, or another, because we're backend providers, because uh, and so these are public suffixes. We've got backend activities for brand TLDs. You know, it's a different kind of business, but of course we cannot allow any anything to fail there. So it's going to be a big, big import. Then we've got the meter registrar channel. Just, you know, I'm, I'm putting a smaller font each time you know, as we go to kind of symbolize the, the natural pressure of priorities. And then finally, we've got the stuff that Core believes in, and we've gone ahead and put out three applications for new GTLDs, two of them in Cyrillic, .site and .online, and .bazaar in, uh, in Arabic script. You can see, certainly see we didn't go for the easy stuff. Um, but then again, look at the pressure that we have. And I'm just comparing this to the way things look for various signs. The, the dominant market player. What's the perspective? You know, I mean, not talking about will or objectives or anything like that. It's basically, what is the natural perspective? The important thing is, of course, common net. Of course. I mean, the, these are more than 100 million domains. Um, uh, then there are backend services for new GTLDs that must not fail, take .bank or whatever. And this is, these are in, uh, 
not directly the company, but of course the name of the company somehow at, an, an, uh, at stake. And then, now it's, it's fairly big, you know, there is a um, very science strategy for new GTLEs, and very science has resolutely gone in that respect to the, the, uh, the IDN route. Actually went resolutely down the uh, homophone, and, and, uh, almost, and, uh, homophone, as far as it could. Let's say it used, it used homophones. And in the case of, um, of the Cyrillic, it used uh, com as a homophone. It did not use niet for obvious reasons. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, it's also, I mean, inevitably not the first priority. It cannot be. It cannot be the, the, the first priority of the, of the company. So here we are. We've got the situation where Cyrillic has, has potential, it's got a substantial population. Maybe we've got the figure wrong. Is that correct? 300 billion or are there more? Is that is that more? Okay. Um, then you know one advantage you know, in this very conservative internet, people always like the stuff they've really seen. And the, the Cyrillic has the one advantage that it's got the very similar touch and feel as ASCII. Uh, the, it, it's easier to understand for, for many people, insiders and outsiders. So you know sometimes the registration have to go through people who do not understand Cyrillic, but at least they can deal with it. They know, you know, where the character starts and stops, and, uh, and so on. If you look at Arabic and outside, they have no idea how to uh, how to handle it, or, the, or Chinese form. The, so that's that's an advantage. And somehow it's in the, it can it can help. And uh, we've got, you know, Lady made, Lady made the presentation. We've got this one hope. Oh, we've got the a relative success of uh, of dot um, uh, dot rf. I mean, this is something that uh, is, is a part of the thrust that we, uh, that we count on. But the weaknesses, again, I mean, not the first priority, that's the biggest problem. You know, to be important, yes, but if you're systematically not the first priority, everywhere, that can actually be an overwhelming problem. Even if it's important, even if everybody takes it seriously. And uh, worse, I think it is worse. People are used to not having Cyrillic um, uh, TLEs or not having idea. We just got, we just got, we just got used to it. It's oh, it's a problem. That's bad. But you know, in, with time, we don't see. It. I mean, the, the entire ICANN community is lot there about lots of problems that we've just got used to it. Oh, there is spam. Well, we've got used to it. Um, oh, there is many people who you know do cyber spotting. You know, a type of spotting. Got used to it. That's a threat. You cannot. We're not going to be able to change it because uh, because actually we just gave up, so it's not going to ch not going to change. And then there's, there's what I call the collective original sins of um, of IDN. Now the, the collective original sins of IDN, of course, is that it's late. You know, we we waited ten precious years until they were actually rolled out, and when people kind of um, realized, you know, that this we still 1996. Would have been a good time, and uh, it kind of started, you know, in anything that would be just a big, big mistake. Should not have been done that way. Okay, we've got there and, uh, and, uh, for the time being. Email was left out, that was a mistake. Um, and uh, the thing that was kind of only done in 2000, what was it, 2005 or something? The, the internationalized resource identifier, the standardization of whatever comes after the slash in the URL, they managed to have this extremely ugly. So if you just copy and paste something that happens to have a, a, a one single non-ASCII thing, or even if it's ASCII, it comes with percent number, percent number, it's something totally unreadable. So the URL is not uh, no, no longer uh, useful. And then a mistake that started out back in, uh, in 2000, People had their eyes on the new GTLDs, and very soon rolled out the first uh, the first IDNs with the idea that IDN TLDs were not needed, and we only needed to have uh, second level IDNs. That was supposed to be okay, and it was done with many mistakes, of course, no rules. Uh, we saw the the, the, the security problems and, uh, and so on. But was what was most visible to users, and it was most visible at the worst place 
at the place where people don't really pay attention. So it's, it is visible. Everybody kind of learned it, but learned it in a way you don't realize you learned it. It's that they just learned not to trust. Uh, my example is, you know, the, the mishandling of, um, uh, of uh, uh, decorated ASCII. Now, decorated ASCII is an idea, probably the most visible sort. Uh, not so important, so people can always live without this, kind of one of the worst problems we have. And um, uh, here is one of the examples. This is Telefonica, the, the, the website of uh, the, an important company, probably known, you know, uh, closely to at least half a billion people um, and, uh, in the world, if you talk about these activities in, uh, in Latin America. And uh, this is Telefonica. Actually, more exactly, this is, if you spell it, if you pronounce it correctly in Spanish, which is where there, this is Telefonica. You know, because it's, you know, it's misspelled so we can actually get it um, into ASCII. And this here is Telefonica with the ugly XN dash dash uh, and so on because of the security problems, you know, the, the Firefox still punishes VeriSign and uh, doesn't allow it to, to uh, display display the uh, XN dash dash, uh, to hide the XN dash dash and uh, okay, now the, I don't need to describe what's, uh, what's on this site so anybody who's seen it learned kind of without paying attention, oh, whenever there is an IDN, it's probably going to be a crook. Don't use IDNs, don't type IDNs, because the crooks have the IDNs. Now going back to, uh, I got misordered my, um, uh, my slides for, uh, accidentally. With all that, you know, we've got a couple of ideas to launch, and I, but I think what we can do is really to build the, 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 on the synergies. That should help us overcome. Now, I see two reasons. One of them are the positive mutual side effects. You know, we've seen that in the case of .cat. When .cat was launched, we saw an effect. You know, talking to the registrars, they all observed this. As people came to register .cat, they also registered .es, which is the legacy domain in the area, and .com, the other legacy. And the, the domain in the in the area. So this was not the objective, but it was a very positive side effect. So between TLDs, there's going to be that side effect between Cyrillic, but also between others you know, and, and, uh, and Cyrillic. And if you've got the uh, the uh, economies of scale, the economies of scale are essentially you know awareness and uh, removal of herbs and so on. My metaphor for the economy of scale is just like the heating problem. If you have a big, a big uh, building with many apartments inside, the heating costs are low. As soon as, as soon as you have individual houses, each one of them has own shops, the heating costs are enormous. Um, so you've got the same, the same old problem here. What can we, what can we do? Um, one of them is, I think it's one of the most uh, more, more obvious ones. We have a couple of, need a couple of common standards for people to actually understand what, we, what we're doing. We put a couple of um, examples here. Homophone domains are probably important to everyone, you know, in, in the case of the uh, um, no, Cyrillic. Um, looking at words like uniform or normal or standard, there was many words that actually would possibly, or you know, names that would possibly be very much similar, you know, in the, in the, and the, the, the they could be typical brand names and so on, derived from Latin or Greek sources. Um, there's actually quite a, quite a lot of similarity between uh, Cyrillic um, uh, and uh, uh, um, ASCII, uh, the Latin cultural background. So, if these homophone domains are totally unchecked everywhere, there's no effort to kind of you know, put them in, put in midline, I think we're losing out. We can do something, you know. Whatever we do, I don't know. I'm not sure what we should do, but we should talk about doing something to make uh, to increase the the uh, the um, uh, uh, how should I say trust of the public in the domain names. In the case of of core itself, we have dot site and dot online. There are going to be ASCII equivalents for those. So we we have an interest in trying to get. To terms with the other, because we don't do the other registries. We have, we want to talk to the other registries and see, look, what can we do to 
um, uh, avoid collisions that are um, that are unpleasant. I assume that in the case of Verisign, you know, Verisign is also probably going to do something to um, to avoid that the total phonetic equivalent is going to be some something totally different systematically. In the case of uh, of the Cyrillic uh, uh, dot com, at least in, in egregious cases, there should be something uh, to, to do about it. The other one is coordination, promotion, register enrollment, and, and, uh, and so on, rollout. There's many. Uh, and finally, what we ne neglected, and I can as a neglected it, you know, when do we have browsers, browser manufacturers coming to ICANN to talk about the intersection between policy and technical um, uh, stuff, sometimes, you know. Last time we saw this happening was in, uh, in, um, in Brussels. And there was, a, there was an interesting anecdote, actually. In Brussels, one representative, I forgot who that was, said that the biggest source of revenue for that specific company was to make sure that the browser did not behave as the user expected, because that's what they're paid for by those people who pay. Now, well, it's, it's maybe not the best model, but if you could, could at least talk about it, you could improve it. I mean, there are interests in, uh, at stake. Um, there, you know, Google pays for Firefox substantial amounts. Um, I don't know exactly what the other flows of money are. It would be kind of interesting to have transparency on this. I mean, that kind of transparency would probably bring more than you know um, the, the witch hunt against a couple of board members in ICANN. Um, Say that you have, you are actually working for a not-for-profit that has very sign as a sponsor. Hence, you cannot talk about new GTOs. That is what we have. But in this stuff, it really makes differences. There's no transparency. Not even you know, not to speak of um, uh, any um, rules about conflict of interest. But at least you could talk about it and possibly improve the situation. Uh, there could be ways to make it compatible with everyone's interests. You know, if interests collide, well, that's bad. But the there's probably still room for improvements where interests will not necessarily can, uh, collide if you just got uh, brought the people together. So if between the IBM people, between the, the Cyrillic um, script people, we can kind of work together, that would be, be wonderful. And uh, the other one is under the hood, you know, the stuff that the normal registrant doesn't want to know, but actually that, uh, the, that we should be uh, taken care of. EPP extensions, is there all going to be a new thing here, a new thing there? The registrars get crazy if they have to do all these, these uh, EPP extensions for the same thing, but all, all the time different. So we have a good reason to work together in that. We've got all kinds of practices from Sandrun, Grass, Land Rush, Pioneer Names, Reserve Names, Auctions, and, uh, and so on, that be, would be a good idea to kind of at least seek convergence rather than everybody having you know, a, a totally different practice. We might work together on lexical research. I mean, there's lots of things to do to figure out if a, name, if a, a word, a name has particular importance, particular needs. Uh, it would be, you know, putting some funds together in a single pool, trying to make the results available for everyone, and we could make lots less mistakes. There should be enough. There should be enough funds available to, uh, to work on this, and probably enough bright minds you know, in the in the in the area to, uh, to work on this. These two practices probably well, you have lots of ideas about what to do with uh, teach conversion, rapid take time and so on. I've got my my uh, my pet idea here, you know, this maybe could be important or not, but namespace development strategies is something that we I, I, we want to, to work a lot on, which is not to have only domain names that are just given to whoever tries to register, but actually to have some portions of the space actively developed as in the case of a newly developed um, um, uh, urban area where people say well this is going to be the main street here's going to be a community center here's going to be a school and here's going to be a theater and the football uh, field and, uh, and whatever and not just wait for things to happen um, that would be of course an interesting subject to talk about and uh, finally that's my last slide Big review of who's there to talk. You know, it's probably the the the, the, uh, the core of the Cyrillic of the Cyrillic um, uh, space are these TLDs right now. And then uh, would uh, would change. I uh, I put the non-existent ones yet. Like dot 
EU and that um, uh, here for lack of whatever the actual information what is going to be there. But let's say there's always oops, there's always a relationship between I think my I ran out of battery. Uh, there's always going to be um, uh, a relationship between the ones that um, uh, have the ASCII, the ones that do the, the surrounding, some of them don't have the equivalent that for Dr. Ross, I don't think there is an, uh, an equivalent right now, but the relationship of course with um, uh, around. And the, in the case of CORE, we have the ASCII equivalents, and in the case of the CCTLD, there are already the ASCII equivalents, not necessarily phonetic equivalents, in some cases yes, in some cases no. But the, um, the, the, uh, this group of people should somehow get together. At least I hope they can achieve something. That's my, that's my, uh, how do you say, call for action. <laughs> I'll leave it, you know, to, uh, to questions or possibly latest thinking to see what we can do to that.